Hello, Dr. Ron England coming to you with menu, the menu example part seven. And today we're going to actually deal with database constraints and dealing with them in a um, entity framework in Visual Studio.net or uh, Visual Studio.net application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to the example that we have. I'm going to show you a little bit of the database in a second. But um, I'm going to first demonstrate what we want to do here. I'm going to create a new menu. I'm going to call this menu. Uh, I'm going to call this the delete menu, okay, because I'm going to delete it, and to be deleted, okay, so it's created, and now I have that menu. Now, I'm going to go up in here, and I'm going to actually create some menu items that are going to point at this menu, and this is all stuff that I've scaffolded here in the past, so it's relatively straightforward to do. Um, so I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to point it at the delete menu. And I can do it in beverages, and I can say uh, beverage on delete menu. I have a few other things that are actually required here, this and the price. Uh, I'll make it a $5 thing, and I'm going to create it. And it points to the delete menu. It's actually going to be an item on that specific menu. Now, in this example, I've got menu groups and menu items that both point to the menu. But we're only going to deal today with the menu items you would have to, in the full example, deal with both situations of every foreign key pointing to everywhere that the foreign key points to. That's business logic. Business logic says you understand that if you build your database this way and you have menu items that point to a menu, you understand that if you delete the menu, you must also delete the menu items and the menu groups that point to it. Okay, That's how you designed the application. Now, in this case, I designed it, but when you design your applications, these are logical things that you put in, and you have to know how to deal with them. Now, let's go ahead and jump out of the code here. Um, now, in the case that I have here, I can, because I've actually gone through and made the code modifications. If you had not modified the code like I'm going to show you here, and you go back to menus, and you try to delete this menu, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an exception, okay? because you're violating a foreign key constraint. We're going to go how you're going to fix that. Okay, so let's look at first, um, where does that foreign key constraint come from? Well, first is when I wrote the application, um, knowing that I had a circular foreign key reference, I overrode on model creating in my DB context, and I removed the one-to-many cascade delete. Now, I actually like to remove the one-to-many cascade delete. I do not like it just automatic deleting things um, when I delete something. I would much rather to control that explicitly in code, or even better, I'd like to control that in stored procedures that are in the database. That keeps the database logic clean, and that the stored procedure handles the logic of, if I need to delete something, this is how it works. Now, it is relatively straightforward to call a stored procedure from Entity Framework, but that is not what we're demonstrating here today. I'm demonstrating how you actually deal with this specific situation and also to get a better understanding of how the controller and actually how the, con the database context works. So first, let's go to the controller. I've already modified the code, but let's look at the code where you're actually going to perform this delete. Now, I've already commented this code out. Okay, The code that I commented out, which if you've scaffolded your framework here, you would have this menu, which finds the uh, which is the ID of the menu goes in. You find the menu, you remove it, and you save the changes. Now, I am going to remove this code, and I'm going to replace it with my code that goes and finds the menu items, deletes them, and then in turn deletes the menu after the menu items have been deleted. And I'm going to put this into a method called delete menu which, by the way, I actually put into the database context. So I have this one call here in delete confirmed. It points to the context. Let's look at what I did there. Here's that method, delete menu, and I pass it. The, this is the menu ID. It is the menu ID of the menu that's going to be deleted. So what I did is I know that, again, I have to delete the menu items prior to deleting the menu. So that's what I do. Menu items is a property of the database context. I use the remove range method, and then I determine what range is going to be removed. 
Now remember, this only removes the range from the database context. I have to call save changes to actually make those modifications in the database itself. So the remove range, I have to tell it what range to remove. And what I do there is I then, I again use the menu items and I use the where method of the menu items. Menu items is a DB set. And the DB set will say, okay, well, what, do I, what is my logic here? Well, the where clause should be where the menu ID equals the ID passed. So I have my little delegate here where I actually have the menu ID equal to the ID. Okay, that's going to return the where of what I've got there, which is essentially um, these menu items which get removed. I save the changes. And then after that is done, I can then use the logic of removing the menu itself. Now, I could have written a menu, I could have written a method in the database context that deleted the just the range and then left this call back in the controller so that the range of menu items was removed and then you remove the menu, but I moved everything over here to the database context. Again, what's the cleanest? Well, the cleanest is to do it in stored procedure, but we do it here this way and I moved everything into the database context. So everything that happens, the save changes occurs, I've got it called twice, I remove the menu items, push it to the database. I remove the menu, push it to the database, and so in the logic, this should work, that I can be able to go to my delete menu here, and I can hit delete, and it confirms, and the delete is done, and it's gone. Now, those menu items should have been deleted, but you know what? We don't know that for sure. Let's do this. Let's go back and create another delete menu. Okay, and then we're just going to call this one description test. Create. Now, let's go ahead and create, um, let's go to the menu items. Okay, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to point it at the delete menu. Okay, I'm going to call this delete beverage. Make it one and a $1 beverage. You saw me do this before. Now, let's go back over here to Visual Studio. Let's bring up the Server Explorer. Let's go ahead and look at the menu database here, and let's look at the table. Should be able to get a connection in here on the tables, and I can, um, I can actually do a query on here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go ahead and do a query on the menus. Okay, add new query. And wait for a second. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Christopher Harrison's favorite. Chugga, chugga, chugga. I'm going to do select star from menus. Okay, and I'm going to execute it. Okay, there it is. Menu ID 4. There's the menu that I just created. Okay, and I'm also going to do select star from menu items. Okay. Go ahead and see what this looks like. And there is the delete beverage, which has the pointer to menu ID 4. That's my foreign key. Okay. Now, let's go back over to here. Okay. Let's go back to the menus. And there's my delete menu. Let's, whoops, that's, let's come up. Let's go ahead and delete it. Oh wait, it's taking its time. Delete menu, let's go ahead and delete it. Delete, delete, there we go, it's gone. Let's go back and run this one again. Okay, that reference, the menu item is gone. And I think that if you go back and you actually look at the menus here, it should be no surprise to anybody that that menu is gone. So what I've demonstrated here is a method to be able to handle those constraints, those foreign key constraints, but understanding that if you've got foreign key constraints, they must be managed. And um, by removing the cascade deletes, you have to manage them manually by hand. You're going to have to come up with the code and the logic to do that. Not necessarily a big problem, but something that you really do need to consider. All the different types of logic, of business level logic, when you're designing a database and building an interface for that database. Okay, thank you very much and good programming.